What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, September the 15th. A beautiful day to be alive. From the heart of New Jersey, the join is brought to you by Draft Motherfucking Kings. The best. Week one may be over, but the season is just getting started. Getting in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook app is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Doesn't get better than that. That's as good as it gets. DraftKings is the real fucking deal, and they're giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly for week two. Just bet a dollar on any football game. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? Bet one dollar on any football game. And we're going to give you $200 in free bets instantly, whether you win or lose. If you can't bet in the sports book in your state, don't worry. DraftKings has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season on their daily seat, on their daily fantasy contest. Listen, their fantasy is no fucking joke. Download the app right now for the daily fantasy contest. You're not going to be sorry. They also have a fucking casino that'll make fucking your asshole pucker up. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at a million dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Whether you go on DraftKings Sportsbook app or you go on the DraftKings Fantasy app, Uncle Joey's coming through on both of them. If you go on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, it's easy. Use promo code Oh, Joey, receive 200 in free bets when you place a dollar on any football game this weekend. That's promo code Joey to get you 200 on any football game this weekend. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Got to be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Colorado, only bookmaking states apply. New customers only, restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, you're not going to have a gambling problem because you have to pay before you lay the bet down with DraftKings. That's what I love about them. But if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or 1-800-9-WITH-IT if you're in Indiana. But if everything is straight, if all engines are set to fucking go, get let's fucking download the Sportsbook app today, right now, because you're going to fucking light your fucking bookie on fire. Fuck that punk-ass bitch when you got DraftKings Sportsbook app, and we're going to throw 200 your way when you bet a dollar. Use code Joey to get this party started. The joint would also love to welcome... MD to the joint, a news sponsor to the no- joint. I love these guys. They call the MD hearing aid. Listen to me. I know you're fucking all young, but you got parents, you got uncles, you got grandpas. And I'll tell you what, my hearing aid saved my fucking life a few years back. I would go to a restaurant, and if you were talking to me, I couldn't hear you. All I could say is, huh, can you understand what the waitress is saying or is she fucking mumbling? Then MD hearing aid is for you if you're having a hard time putting all the sounds together. If you're worried about looking like an old man, don't worry about it. They have a sleek design and it fits inside your ear so nobody knows you're even wearing it. The first time I saw one was when I worked with Ray Leota on The Sopranos and I asked him, and he told me he wasn't deaf. It's that his, his ear wasn't capturing all the sound. That's the same problem I had. So do yourself a favor. If you don't need a hearing aid, that's fine. But if you do, MD hearing aid is the one for you. They're water resistant. You can wear it in the shower, no problem. And they got a rechargeable battery that lasts up to 30 hours. Listen, nobody's wife talks that much. Now, hearing aids can cost fucking, I mean, my original ones, cost $2,800 a piece. It's $5,200. You ready for what MD hearing aid could do for you? These are $299 each. How? They simplify the design and cut out the middleman. The best part is this is all direct to you. No doctors and no prescription needed. Listen up. They got 600,000 satisfied customers. Plus, you get a 45-day risk trial and a 100% money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. Listen to your Uncle Joey. These are as good as premium hearing aids. Reclaim your life from hearing loss. Go to mdhearingaid.com. Again, mdhearingaid.com. Use promo code Joey, and they're going to get you the deal of a lifetime. You ready? Buy one, get one deal. They're normally $600 each, but now you get to pay up for $299 with code Joey. If that's not a deal, I don't know what is. Plus, they're going to throw in the extra charging case. It's $100 value. 
but just for the listeners of the joint. So head to mdhearingaid.com and press in Joey. You got questions, you want to talk to them, you could even call them at 1-833-773-1355. That's 1-833-773-1355. Listen up. It's the MD Hearing Aid, cocksuckers. You don't have to look at me with that stupid look on your face no more. And the joint is also brought to you by Upstart. You hate looking at your credit card statements every month? Yeah, so do I. When you're in debt, it feels like it never ends. But Upstart could fucking help you, okay? Upstart is fast and easy to get a personal loan to pay off your debt. Listen, being in debt is not fun. Right now, between the moratorium, work, people are having a hard time. Whether it's paying off your credit cards or consolidating your debt, get a simple fixed monthly income. Just a five-minute online rate check. You get approved the same day and receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. So do me a favor today. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Joey. That's upstart.com slash Joey. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know I sent you. I got to throw this in disclaimer. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Joey and get out of debt today. And now it's time to start the show. We got a great guest guest today, and we're going to rock your motherfucking world. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joint. It's Wednesday, the 15th. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you this month was going to fucking move at the speed of fucking light? Speed of light. It's the 15th already. Two days ago was the fucking first. Do the fucking math. (laughs) This thing is flying, Jack. And it's going to fly straight to the end of the fucking month. It's been a great week so far. Had a couple things going on. Went to acupuncture this week. Worked out. I don't, I'm still waiting to hear on the Rick Rubin thing for Thursday. I'm excited about that. A lot of good things going on, man. Fucking acupuncture is great. I, uh, you know, I went for all those that whole time and that whole last year. I didn't go, so hopefully this will be the final fucking step in my recovery to feeling a lot better. You could tell I'm feeling better. I'm looking better. I'm alive and kicking. Like I said in the top of the fucking show, football is back. I had a great weekend this weekend, fucking uh, the the fair at the park, the fucking uh, Jimmy Florentines was great. We watched the Miami Dolphin New England game, and it's so weird how much life has changed, you know. I still remember eight, nine years ago, goofing on Lee because uh, he was, I'm home watching a New England game. What the fuck are you, you play for New England? I used to bust his balls. And this week, I'm sitting there watching New England against Miami, and I'm thinking to myself, fuck, I'm having a good time. I go, that's how fucked up I was in L.A. that I wouldn't even I wouldn't even watch football. Like, I wouldn't even watch football. Everything was on work mode. And my whole life was work mode. You're not allowed to watch football. It's bad for you. 
things have fucking changed. I'm loving football. I watched the Miami game. I didn't bet any of the early games. I bet fucking the Rams because I know the Rams, so they came through for me. And then Monday night, I had a bag of shit because I bet the fucking Raiders, and I I thought it was home team underdog on a Monday night. They're getting four, and everything was set up for it. They were 17-24. It was 24-17. They were ready to score, and then they fucked up, and that was the end of that. I had a parlay, too, even though parlay's a sucker's bet. I just wanted to watch the game, so I threw in a $25 parlay. I think I would have won like 120 or something like that. It was just something to watch the fucking game. I figured at least I have one side that won. Both my sides crapped out, so I'm ready for fucking next Sunday. You know, I might blast some fucking college in, but I don't know much about college sports. You got to stay on top of that shit and know it. I don't know shit about college football, so I'll just stick with pro. Obviously, I don't know much about pro because I took a beating on Monday fucking night. So, you know, you take your fucking chances. I love it. I love just putting 25. I don't have to watch the whole game. I didn't watch the whole fucking four quarters. I can't watch four quarters. I'll come down here. I'll watch the beginning after halftime. I'll watch a few minutes. Then I'll go outside. I smoke my nightly number. Then I come back in and I watch the rest of the fucking game. I may play a little fucking guitar. And that's it. That's my fucking night. You know, I I, I just can't sit there and watch fucking 18 games in a day. I could sit there for a little while, take a ride. And that's what I did Sunday. I went to Jimmy's, watched a few quarters, got up, met my family, went over to the fucking fair. Let me tell you something. It was great. There was a ton of people there. It was a covid event. That's why I sat under a fucking tree by myself and looked from a yonder. You know what I'm saying? Like, I looked from a panda, whatever the fuck they call it. I looked over. It was, it, was, it was fucking great. Let me tell you something. They had these milkshakes. I didn't get one. I got one for my daughter, right? Because I got one for a bunch of the people. Yeah, because we had like six kids with us. They had fucking milkshakes with a donut on top. And you put the straw through the hole of the milkshake, of the, of the donut, and then you bite around the fucking donut, and you... So I bought two s'mores, two Reese's Pieces, and two Oreos because I had like Dylan, Gavin, Mercy, Nicole, and then we had the parents. So I said the four kids get shakes and then the parents could split two or whatever. I think they were 10 bucks a piece, these fucking shakes. There wasn't a lot of milkshake, but the donut was fucking huge and grandioso. My wife tasted the donut. She said the donut was fucking tremendous. I don't, I didn't want no donut. I'm this close on the glucose fucking level. I don't want diabetes. Listen, if I got diabetes, I'll die because I'm not stabbing myself with no fucking needle. The first acupuncture Nah, both of them have been good. I can lie to you and tell you I thought I was going to faint, but nah, they both been pretty good. The first day I was a little scared. Every time she touched me, I jumped a little bit because I haven't had nobody touch me with the fucking needles and shit. COVID has really fucked things up for people. We stopped getting touched like people, you know, like I was going to, like I wasn't going to like massage envy or nothing. Those places suck. I had this Chinese chick in fucking North Hollywood. I used to take Lee there. I used to take my wife there. They would rub your feet, your fucking calves, the, the, the front. She would give you a full body massage for 40 bucks, and this bitch was no slouch. She would elbow you to death. She would get up on the table and step on your fucking neck. There was times I couldn't breathe, but you know what? I don't live there no more, so that went away. I miss her, though. She used to have the afternoon happy hour, 20 bucks. They'd do your neck, your feet, and your calves. They massage your fingers, your arms, your hands. Tremendous. You go some, take a little edible. I would go home and wash my balls and go in there and listen to them talk Chinese and shit. When you, Because when you're face down and people are talking Chinese, you're like, what the fuck's going on? I can't see who's talking. You just hear a bunch of people yelling. It's like the beginning of Janet Jackson's If. You ever see Janet Jackson's If? They got the Chinese guy, Aduba, Aduba, and you don't know what the fuck's going on. Same fucking thing. When you get a massage and your head's down the pillow, you don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know if I'm ordering ribs or they're going to rub my feet. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But, uh, yeah, the, the fair was great, you know. It's just been great. Let me tell you something, man. It's tough to go through life when you're fucking struggling mentally. And from, like, I think I struggled mentally after my mother died. I think I struggled a little mentally after I got divorced. You know, because that's what I compared 
what I was going through this time to after I got divorced. I felt empty. Like, I think the move had a lot to do with that, meeting new people, you know, but the therapy took care of it. Me writing took care of it. Me getting out there and meeting new people took care of it. And I feel great about it, guys. This is what you're supposed to fucking do. I'm 58. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I love what's going on right now with my life. You know, I miss comedy, but I don't. You know, I really don't. I'm enjoying what I got going on on the block and in my life and what I'm trying to do. I'm in a new fucking strength program. I'm going to get a little stronger. I'm gonna, I included fucking pull-ups in my routine now, and I'm including fucking squats. So now I'm going to lift three days a week and focusing on one major lift all three days, like Monday's a deadlift. I'm doing up to 200 fucking pounds. I'm getting fucking stronger and stronger now for reps. You know, this is what my life is about now. This is what you do. You fucking evolve and you move the fuck forward. You know, this is what it's all about, you know. And as of today, we got, what, 15 more days left for the many motherfucking saints in Newark. You can't beat that. That's, you know, we're halfway fucking there. So it's all good, man. It's all gravy. And like I told you guys, I promise you, the whole month of October, I would have different people, different themes of Soprano thing. I came through for you again today. I got to be honest with you. I've done 10 years of interviews, and this is the first time an interview made me cry. Uh, my guest made me fucking cry for once. For years, I put away fucking what's his name with the edibles and Sarah Tiana and Owen Benjamin went down. That She didn't give me an edible. She fucking just broke me down and, uh, it was great to have her on the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Catherine Narducci from uh, Bronx Tale, The Sopranos, a bunch of other shit. She was in The Irishman. She was great in The Irishman. She's got a great story. And as far as dysfunction go, her and I are tied for childhood dysfunction, but she's fucking great. Enjoy her, Miss Catherine Narducci. Check one, two. Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joy. What's up, beautiful? Hi. I love I the blonde hair. Thank you. I got it blonde for... We're not recording, are we? Yeah, we're recording. We're on. Oh, this is live? We're live. We're on Memorex. Oh, shit, I almost said why I got it blonde. I got it blonde for a job, a great, probably one of my all-time favorite jobs. It's, it's a crazy character, like, out of her mind, and... The hair is, I have extensions too. It's going to be long blonde on the show. It's long blonde, but I left it because I figured five hours in the chair to get black to blonde. Why am I going to go throw, you know, black dye on my hair? I just left it. No, leave it until you shoot and then let it grow out. Fuck it. Right. Unless somebody else says anything. How are you today, my love? I'm good. You know, you're one of those people that I feel like I know you. Yes, you too. I feel like I just know you. Like, I know you. And we just, never met. No. And I'm look, I was looking at this the other day after I spoke to you. The Pleasant Avenue Connection. You ever read this book? Oh, my God. Yes, of course. This is a great book. It got optioned and never got shot. Yes. But this is a great book. It's, look I think, at it. Actually, look I how think old my, it is. Fa my father's in that, Mickey Narducci. Yeah, I'll read it and I'll... Look, I still have a mark in here from I was on page 142 at one time. Wow. This, this book, if you go online, it costs like 500 bucks. Yes, and you know, there's another one that's out of print too. Uh, uh, I forgot the name, but about Harlem, it's out of print. And actually, my, my, my friend got it for me for my birthday. I don't know what the hell I did with this book. It's driving me crazy. I freaking lost it. And I can't think of the name of this book. Another one. Um, I wonder if that's the one. Did you see Nikki Narducci in that? No. I, you know, I read it years ago. Years ago. I, like, I was hunting it down. And I even went, because the only way you could get it from a library is by going into the library and reading it. You can't take it home. Oh, so, wow. I told a friend of mine about it. He won a contest. He won two hundred fifty thousand dollars 
And that was his gift to me. He bought me the book. It was like 600 bucks. The fucking cover was ripped off. Wow. Unbelievable. I'll tell you one thing. I couldn't ask for a better childhood growing up in that neighborhood. That's a great neighborhood. I loved it up there. I loved everything about everything. I'm telling you, it was so beautiful. And, you know, I go to Brooklyn now and I go around and I go, wow, this must have been like back in the 70s. This must have been unbelievable. But you always think where you grow up is like the best. But I don't know. To me, I felt I, I grew up in a very magical place. I felt Harlem was magical because as kids, you know, in the other boroughs are great. All five boroughs are great. Even Staten Island. They're great, but everybody wants to be in Manhattan. I just felt blessed as a kid. I knew at a very young age, like at five years old, I used to look at my out my window on First Avenue. I grew up between 114 and 115. And when you're from Harlem, real Harlem, people say a hun. They don't say a hundred. I grew up between 114 and 115. And I would look out my window. I had to be five years old and go, I'm so, I love it here. I'm so lucky. I just knew it. I loved the streets of Harlem. Me too. I, had, I had an aunt that sold drugs on 113th, right by the mouth of Spanish Harlem, right by the park right there. Jefferson Park. Yes. And uh, I used to go up there just to visit her because it was like a zoo. Walking up the stairs, people would be shooting heroin and shit. Oh, yeah. And they'd be nodding. So I'd go yep. to the bodega, get some a couple empanadas or whatever the fuck they had, some coquitos <laughs> and shit. Yeah. Those little coconut balls. The cuchi frita. The cuchi fritas. And I'd go upstairs and see her and see the junkies. She'd give me 20 bucks and I'd walk around Harlem as a kid. Very, 10, very, 11. very, very colorful neighborhood. Very colorful. That's the one thing. Very cultural. Just amazing. Just amazing the shit. There was stuff in Harlem you couldn't get in any of the other five boroughs. Yep. Like little snacks and shit. Every borough had this. I'm really proud to be from this area. Like, I remembered last week during the 9 11 things how much I hurt during 9 11 because I was in California and I'm seeing my city getting fucking shot down by fucking planes. I couldn't tell you how bad I felt. And people don't understand. Yeah, I grew up in Jersey, and I love Jersey, and it's my heart. But my original heart when I came from Cuba was that fucking Manhattan. I loved it. I loved everything about New York City, man. Everything. And then they showed me Harlem, and that's where the fucking flavor of that city is. The city is the city. And you know what? That's why I'm so proud to be on the Godfather Harlem, I swear. I did the scout. I helped them do some scout locations and I walked them around before we even started it. And, and, and before, we would, they were just in getting in production. And I showed them, I took them to all the clubs. I took them to where all the, you know, colorful people stayed. You know what I mean? In that world. Um, and I, I was so happy to do it. I've never been so uh, proud of the show. I'm just so happy Harlem's getting its due. I'm just, I just haven't, I give a, uh, 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 Chris Broncato and Mark Juan, um, all the people who brought it, and Jim Atchison who brought it to the table. I'm, I'm just so, give them a lot of props for that, man. Just really a lot of props for it. The Godfather Harlem is just unbelievable. I'm I've just heard so happy great for things Harlem. about it, so I'm really happy for you. I've heard great things about it. And now that I'm living here, I would love to shoot all those fucking shows. That one, the one about Brooklyn with the Italians. There's a ton of shows they're shooting. You out are here. so perfect for the yeah. Godfather of Harlem. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Perfect. I was thinking about you this morning when I was doing my gratification because we had a long talk about that last week. Yes. About it's a different world and. You don't know what's being said to you anymore. I feel that everybody's fucking lying to us. Everybody. You know, my wife ordered food yesterday. They told her to be here in 20 minutes. I go, Terry, you know they're not going to have it ready in 20 minutes. She goes, no, nah, but the guy told me. She got back an hour and a half later. I said, I told you, everybody's lying to you. The airlines, the doctors, the fucking, the who, the fucking governors. Nobody's being straight with us, so we have to be straight for ourselves. So, yeah. in other words, this could make us fucking go crazy. 
This can make you go crazy. Yeah. So you have to get your own corner, see what works for you, what information you have. And you have to be different in what's going on in the world today. Look, my daughter's home. That's why I didn't call you yesterday. She went into school at 8.30. At 9.30, they called. A kid in the class, he had contact with somebody who had COVID over the weekend. My daughter can't go back to school till next fucking Monday. I had to bring her home yesterday, give her a test, and babysit all day. Today, she's on the you know, on Zoom and till 3, and we're good. But that that's the world today. They're not going to go to. They're not going to go to school. This school is going to be closed. They've had twenty-one cases in three days of school. Twenty-one fucking. Day. So you have to, you know, you, you sit there and you go, "I've had enough." You order a, a TV, they send you the wrong TV, or they don't send it to you at all. It's back ordered. You get a plane ticket. Everything's fucking upside down. So you need your mental fucking side. So. We've been talking about it, and, I, and you know, Catherine said something to me about it, how you wake up in the morning, you get your cup of coffee, you find a dark corner, even if it's for one fucking minute, and you think about, you know, what you're grateful for. Really, like, really dig deep. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm grateful for my heart. I'm grateful for this napkin. And then when you get in the shower, you repeat it out loud. That's the system I do, and I fucking love it. It's been, it's helped me dramatically the last 120 days. Could, could, could I tell you something? I, I I watched your podcast, a lot of them in a row, as I do everything that I do. Like if I get on a TV show, I start watching the episodes, and I just did my research with you, and I came across that one podcast in particular, and it hit me. Oh, You hear all the self-help things and things to do. I don't know, that one thing in particular... It helped me, even though I'm the most, I walk around going, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, for everything, for a glass of water. I'm like always appreciating and, and very self-aware. I'm very extremely hyper, too hyper self-aware and appreciate everything, right? You said that, let me tell them what you're talking about for people maybe that are just tuning in and don't know. He said, every day you wake up and you say three things out loud that you appreciate. Is that correct? Yes. You say it. And I woke up the next day, and for some reason, I said, oh, let me try it. And I said it. And then I said I said the three things three times. And every time I said it, it got stronger, and it resonated with me, myself, even though I know it, and I'm the one who's saying it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I feel that, you know? And... When you, when you appreciate even less than, oh, I even appreciate, you know, my apartment. I appreciate, I, you know, when you start going down to the little, little, littlest things, like I appreciate that I could fucking pay my electric bill. You just realize, like you're saying, it, we are so blessed and we don't even look at the little things anymore. And now we have the time and the realization to do that again. Because of the way the world is. So we got to go back to our own selves and say, wait, check in on you. What the fuck is going on with you? And this is what's going on. And I'm like, just so appreciative. But I want to just say another thing, too. That helped me. And I did it today. I didn't do it when I woke up. I did it when I was going for my morning coffee. I was walking and I said it out loud. And it helped me. But, you know, your charm... And you're the reason you are where you are right now. Brutal honesty, brutal honesty, and especially publicly, publicly, it's 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 different than you're brutally honest with somebody, and, and you know, just you and this person in a private conversation. When you're brutally honest, and you're being brutally honest about your past, because I listen to you and things you went through. Crazy, right? The brutal honesty and your past and then overcoming all these obstacles that you came and being brutally honest about it is your uh, charisma. That's You're very charismatic. To me, brutal honesty is a charismatic, like, to me, like a charismatic quality. It all goes with... Because sometimes people don't, you, you'll either be way too much for people, like, oh, no, this, 
Or, which I think why you are where you are, is that even my godson, Alessandro, was like, I love him. He says it like it is. Oh, my God, I'm so happy you're going on a show. I love him. I love him. I love him. And me and my brothers love him. And they're all, like, under 25. They're kids. You're resonating with that, right? And you just said something at the beginning. We're being bullshitted by everybody, right? So when somebody comes along and they're honest like you, it's so refreshing. And not only that, that you overcame such a hard life and craziness, crazy fucking dysfunctional to the highest, to the fucking, if there was a scale one to 10, yours is a hundred, the obstacles that you overcame and that you're successful and that you're here. That's why everybody loves you. You give people hope. You really do. I'm not even saying, I'm saying you give people hope and you tell people, I don't give a fuck where you're from. I don't give a fuck. If your mother and father were junkies, your father, you had no father. I don't give a shit. If you robbed banks in the past, right now, today, you could change all that. And you, there is hope. You could o- always time to change, number one. And anybody, if they have a, they have to want it, has a dream, no matter where you are in your life. And no matter what past you have. You can overcome that and become somebody. You can be successful. And you you are the epitome of that. You're the epitome. You could come from nothing and and make something of yourself, you know? And I, I just think that you're great. And I think that that's why your show is success, successful. That's why you are successful. It's all It's the brutal honesty. It's the brutal, brutal honesty and where you come from. You know, what you've come from and that you share that with people and then you laugh about it and you turn that negative into a positive. That's all there, That's all you have to do. You know, turn that. Remember that song? I, it always made me so happy. You have to accent the, 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 the negative, turn it into a positive. And that's the way the story goes. It's fucking true. Right. You can't play the victim. No. You gotta, you gotta like you 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 cannot play the victim. You have to turn that shit around. You're responsible for everything in your life. Remember the last time you spoke to a victim? How hard was it on you? People who just do not. It's very hard on people. They blame people. the world. They blame and the they world. They blame everybody but themselves. It drives me crazy. Because you come from. The bottom of the fucking barrel. And you didn't play a victim. You don't play a victim. You 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 overcome that. You realize once everybody realizes that everything you do in your life is your fucking responsibility. You make it. You you wake up in the morning and you decide is it gonna be a good day or a shitty day? Am I gonna pl- complain all day and blame my mother, my father, my circumstances? Or am I going to say, fuck this, I'm my own person. I have to be responsible for everything that happens to me. My happiness, my work, my job, what I do, who I date. If I'm in a bad relationship with a guy, I can't blame the guy. Oh, he did this to me. Oh, he did that to me. No, you did this to you by being there and showing up with that person. Everything is, when when you get that power, it's so powerful. It's a fucking revelation. When you realize you are responsible for everything, you cannot blame anybody. It, life becomes a lot easier, a lot easier, and you be, get a lot more power. You hit it, right? That fucking judge told me that. I didn't believe him. And now I even blame the Kennedy assassination on me. I did it. And I feel so much better in my life that I took responsibility for things. I was one of those people... What happened to your job? Ah, oh, the fucking boss wasn't a nice guy. It's ah. you. It's you. It's, it's you. always you. It's nothing to do with anybody else. It's it's your attitude. It's how you're seen. So you have to change these things to move forward. Okay. And that's exactly what I did. I just take responsibility. I fucked up. What do you want me to do, Catherine? I fucked up. Right. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to bed tonight, and I'm going to wake up, and I'm never going to fuck up like that again. Yes. I promise you that. I'm never going to. And just say it. And you'll be fine. But people don't want to. They want to ride that fuck up. 
You fucked up. That's it. Who cares? I went to prison. They were going to throw me in there for nine years. I was cracked. I did the four. I came out. They told me you can't be an acupuncturist. You can't cut hair. You can't sell real estate. You can't do anything. So what do you want me to do? Collect disability? That's what you, when you go to prison, that's what they make you do on the, on the way out. They tell you you're disabled. You're never going to get a job, especially now with background checks and shit. So is that enough to just lay down, be a fucking lay down Sally? Fuck no. You get up, you sign your fucking shoes, and you go out there, and you bullshit. And then, you know, I used whatever to Whatever you got to do. Whatever the fuck you got to do. I would bullshit. I don't give a fuck. I, I done it before. Okay, here's the job. I thought you did it before. I never did. I just got a lot of heart, and I work hard, and I knew you would like that quality. Okay, we got something to work with. That's right. What That's was your so dream true. growing up? What was your little dream growing up in Harlem? To be an actress. Really? Since the age of five years old, I swear to you, me and my mother, my mother had a voice you cannot believe. I mean, like, unbelievable. And she would put on these shows. We would watch TV, all the million-dollar movie, Thriller. She would say, stay up with me, watch it with me. And I would watch these movies with her, and it was like my bonding time with my mother. And my mother would then act everything out. We'd watch A Star Is Born with Judy Garland and James Mason. My mother would sing all the songs in A Star Is Born. And I would, she would say, take the brush, make believe it's a microphone, and introduce me. And I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, Bunny Narducci. And my mother would get up and just start singing all the songs. And then she'd take the brush and introduce me. And I would act out all the, all the characters in the movie. And it was just so much fun to me. And... As I got older, I never let that dream die, and it stayed with me. And um, it just, you know, that was it. I was born to be an actress. I was born to be an actress. That's an actor. That That's it. I was born to be an actor, and and now I'm an actor. Thank God. I thank God, you know, that my calling and, and my dream and my calling and my vocation are all the same thing. You're blessed when you have that. How old were you when you started acting? Uh, 28. No shit. What were you doing before that? I was working in the Hunts Point um, Terminal Market as a as a biller, the fruit and produce. They do the fish up there now, right? Uh, the Hunts Point that's Fish Market. That's another part of it. I was in okay. the uh, fruit and produce. Yeah, I was up there a few months ago. That's fucking crazy at four in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's fucking real up there at Hunts Point oh, Market. Oh, it's so there. real. They moved it from the other fish market, the one at Fulton. Fulton used to be in the city, and then they closed that, and they now all the fish is being sold out of Hunts Point. So my brother has a fish company. I went up there with him like three months ago. It's fucking crazy. I thought I was definitely going to get COVID. Thank God I got the fuck out of there. When you were a kid, did you go to the Fresh Air Fund, getting off the subject? Yes. You did that? When I was, when my mother, when we came here, my mother had a dry cleaner in the Bronx. She was partners in a dry cleaner in the Bronx. And they had that program for kids up there. The yeah. fresh air program where they take you to camps and shit like that. Was that they, it? You, you go live with a, a strange family in Harlem. All the kids would leave all at the same time every year. We'd go to LaGuardia House. They check you for lice. They check your feet for um, at least feet. And that was it. You got a... Put at five years old, you got put on a train. My mother used to be like, thank God. They would get all the parents would get rid of all the kids in all of you'd get on a train at Grand Central. You would get a, I swear to you, a number around your neck on a piece of cardboard. They'd stick you with a suitcase. You'd get on a train and the number had like a number like eight blue. Like the card would be blue and it would have a number. You'd get up. My mother would go, okay, bye. Kick me on the train. I'd be like, ah. I'd end up, you get off the train. They'd say, blue eight, and that's the stop you would get off. You hold your fucking card up like this. Your family has the same card, and they find you in the crowd. You go, hey, you're my family. You go stay with them for two weeks. You're in a sh complete stranger's house for two weeks. And you just, you're just like unpacking your bag. Going, I could have got raped, molested. It was a crazy program. I don't know how my mother sent me, but you would go away for two weeks and you were not allowed to call your family. You were not allowed to be in touch. And uh, oh my God, 
I had fun and I, I used to cry and then sometimes get abused by the kids. They'd say, you know, you're on welfare. Get out of our house. Like the kids would sometimes be mean. And sometimes I would like it. I'd get a good family. But I didn't know if you went on went to that program. I, got, I, did, it one, program. I did it with Miss, the Williams family. They were African-American. That's great. They were great. And it's funny that you said they were. And here's the funny thing. They lived in Harlem. They lived in Harlem, the Williamses. Wait, you went to the Fresh Air Fund in Harlem? Yeah, because my godmother lived on 148th Street. So all the kids would go down to 125th Street, that little center down there. So that was, I thought that was the Fresh Air Fund. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's the Fresh Air Fresh Air Fund. You would go, the law, you know what the slogan was? Take a kid up. Take a kid out of the jungle and give them fresh air. Yes. I remember that now. Yes. And, and it the, would be, the commercial would be a kid, um, like a kid on a, you know, like when they have the rope hanging from a tree and you go out and you fly into the lake? Like Tarzan. And it, would be, it would be a kid and it'd say, take the kid out of the jungle and give him fresh air. Be a part of the fresh air. <laughs> now, what is Harlem run from technically? I think, well, East Harlem runs from, I'm going to say, I may be wrong, I'm going to say East Harlem runs from First Avenue, because uh, Pleasant doesn't go all the way up. Pleasant right. only goes from 114 to 122nd, I think. So you'd go from um, 100 Street, I'd say, like, a hundred, I'd say Harlem, East Harlem starts like from 99 to like 122nd from First Avenue. Now we're talking East Harlem to like Lexington Avenue. So you got that little corner pocket. And uh, a very magical place. And where's regular Harlem run from? So... Then Harlem, I guess, West Harlem uh, would be, well, that, I was in, I, I lived in El Barrio, they call it, right? right Spanish Barrio. Harlem. Right. Spanish Harlem. Um, and then West Harlem, I think, it, it's, the West Side starts from what? Like uh, Park Avenue all the way down to, uh, all the way down to like almost like the West Side Highway. That's, yes, it does run to the water. Well, That's listen, what I West, yes. West Harlem is bigger than, I, West Harlem has got a lot more than East Harlem. You know, West Harlem was bigger, as far, you know, area-wise. So you like, got to remember that I lived on 88th Street on the west side. But for me to get records and shit, I would have to walk up to Harlem. And I still remember being six and walking up to get James Brown's hot pants. Wow. Up in Harlem, you weren't, there was no fear. We just no. walked. And then I would hit Harlem from both directions. I loved 125th Street. I loved everything about it. Oh, yeah. I loved it. I remember even in 93, I used to cop weed on 125th Street on Broadway. There was a little bodega. And then there was a weed spot three doors down. The guy, we used to call the guy Mr. Wendell. From that song that came out in 93, I forget the name of the band, Mr. Wendell, whatever the fuck. What was your Mr. first Wendell. acting job? What was your first acting job that you remember? Oh, my first acting job was a Bronx Tale. Are you serious? That was your yeah. first, first, first acting job. I was, I was an undercover actress. My family did not know that I was acting because every time I would mention it, they weren't being mean. They weren't like, oh, you can't do it or negative. They would just like laugh or think it was unrealistic. It wasn't like anybody was going, you know, uh, my mother, my mother and father were already dead. So I didn't have parents saying, oh, you got to do this, that. Anyway, even if my mother and father were alive, it was very dysfunctional. They wouldn't give a shit anyway. It wasn't like go to school or anything like that. But it was more like. You got two kids. Where you going? You know, like that. Or like, you got to be, you know, you got to support yourself. You know, not being mean, just be looking out for me. And so I was doing it on the down low. I would get backstage. I would do all these little things go on 
go on uh, auditions through backstage. And when I was at the Hunts Point Terminal Market, this woman, Annabella, who I worked with, said, you know, there's an open call. There's an Because they knew I was doing it. They said, there's an open call. Rob Dino has got an open call for a little boy. You should take your son and then you can meet him. We didn't know how it worked. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, I'll take my son for Colosio. I take my son on the open call. There was an open call for Colosio. And when I'm there, I see that the women start walking in that look like me, walk like me, and talk like me. And I was like, shit, what are they here for? I could do whatever they're here for. When the casting director came out with my son, I said, could I go in with whatever they're going in for? And she goes, the little boy's role is an open call. Today, the the wife, and I didn't know the wife was Nero's wife. She goes, the wife is um, not an open call. But if we don't find it today, a sad uh, actress today, we're open, we're just, it's an open call tomorrow. Call me in the morning and I'll let you know if you could come back. So I said, oh, okay. I'm getting dressed. I'm ready to go to work. I said, you know what? Let me call. I call up. I said, hey, did you find the, uh, the wife? And she goes, no, you can come. I went back. This is a God's honest, true story. I went back and I auditioned and I go home and my cousin comes with me to the audition. I tell her and she's like, why? I was like, just, just come with me, please. I'm nervous. She comes with me. I do my audition. The next morning I'm getting dressed for work again. The phone rings. My cousin I thought my cousin called somebody and said, call and act like she got, like they were goofing on me. I answered the phone. I'm getting dressed for work. And she goes, hi, this is um, Ellen Chenoweth. You were here. Uh, You came in for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, she goes, Bob wants to meet you. And I went, I hung up the phone. And I said to my cousin, oh, you're so fucking funny. She goes, I didn't do anything. I said, oh, my God. The phone rings, calls, she calls back, she goes, hi, this is Ellen Chenoweth. Listen, um, Bob saw your tape. He wants to know if you would like you to come down for, for a call back. And I was like, Bob who? And she goes, Robert De Niro. And I was like, what? Robert De Niro saw my tape? And I went down there, yes, I can, yes, yes, yes. I went down, there was like 2,500 girls there. And I, 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 I waited a long time, like three hours. I finally got in that room. It was De Niro and Chaz, Jane Rosenthal, and the casting director. I got in the room. And, you know, here's the thing. When I was down in that waiting room and I saw all these girls there, and I said, holy shit, it's, I thought it was just going to be like me. I didn't understand how this worked. I never did anything professional yet. And I looked around, I, I, I made my aunt, I told my aunt what I did. I said, please come with me, I'm nervous. I went down to Tribeca. And I remember I looked around and they were getting close to me. And I looked up in the atrium and I saw De Niro look over and he waved. And I went, oh my God, De Niro just looked over, he's up there, oh my God. And my aunt goes, calm down, I said, Oh my God, I'm so, I'm, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. I'll never, I couldn't breathe. I was passed, felt like I was going to pass out. And all of a sudden I thought about my mother and me and my mother, what we used to do, what I told you, we used to do our thing. And when my mother was alive, she said, please become an actress. I want you to work with Robert De Niro. He's my favorite. You got to become an actress. Please work with Robert De Niro. I love him. And I remember I, all these in the atrium, like all the, the sun was coming in and all these little, you know, when the sun has like sun particles in the rays. And I looked up and I said, mom, please don't make me nervous anymore. Take it away from me. If I go in there, I'm nervous. I won't get the role. I got to be calm. Please, mom, please stay with me. And I remember this. I'm not joking. This whole warm feeling came over me and I just looked at my aunt and I just like got calmed down and they go Catherine Arducci and it came right back up I was like oh fuck and I got started getting closer and closer and closer and I walked in the room and Chaz was there and he went hi and I was like 
hi. And I was like, so nervous. And he goes, say hi to Bob. And I was like, I did not want to turn my head and, and see Rob De Niro's face. I went, and I just started feeling buzzing in my head. My fingers were numb. And he looked at me, go, I said, I'm, I'm so nervous. I have to be honest with you. Honesty, honesty. I have to be nervous, uh, honest with you. I'm so nervous right now. He goes, you're supposed to be nervous. Go sit down, have some water. When you feel not nervous, just go like this. I sat down, they bring me water, and I look up in those fucking sun rays of the room, and I just look, look just like this. I said, Mom, this is real. This is not a broken down theater. I'm in the room with your guy. Please, please stay with me. Let me do good. Please, Mom, please stay with me. Got that feeling again, and I just went, Boom. I'm ready. And he sat down and said, you ready? We're going to read some lines and then we're going to improvise. Didn't even know what the fuck improvise meant. I read the lines and he looks at me and they look at each other and like, you sure you're not an actress? Like, you know, I said, no. He said, okay, now we're going to improvise. We start improvising. He tells me, I said, he said, I'm going to say something. Whatever comes natural to you, you say back, we'll do it. I do that, I do that. The whole time, my mother is inside my body. I am just like, I did it my whole life. And I'm so calm, I'm so relaxed. I feel like I'm supposed to be here right now. This is where the fuck I am supposed to be. I am supposed to be right here. And I got up, I was done, and he goes, listen, there's a slight chance we may call you to come back. And I was like, oh, okay. I went downstairs, I was done. I went to my aunt, she goes, how did it go? You went in there so long. I said, I think, I think I did good. I think I'm gonna come back. I got home on my answering machine, hi, you gonna come back? Went back, I did it over and over and over and over until the last, um, I screen tested. And I, they said, we're going to call you guys over the weekend. We're going to let everybody know who, who's in and who's not. And over the weekend, they called me. Jazz called me. He said, hey, Rosina. That's my character's name. I was like, nah! And I got it. Fucking great story. Yeah. That was great. That was your intro to this life. That was my intro. Can I tell you something about brutal honesty? And this is the God's honest truth. And I, who's ever listening to this? When I was in the room with the casting director, and I wish they still have that tape. I won't say everything I said right now, but I'll say some of what I said. She said, when you're done with those sides, tell me who you are. And on God, I looked in the camera and I said, my name is Kat. And I was always brutally honest like you. And that is a loaded question. Tell me who you are. Even on regular nine to five job interviews, the worst question they could ask me, because that's how I didn't get the job in that world. Tell me who you are. And I said, my name is Catherine Narducci. And my whole life, I knew I was supposed to be an actress. And everywhere and every job I ever had, I would look out the window and daydream that I was supposed to be an actress and I wasn't supposed to be there, that I was supposed to be right here. And my father was murdered when I was 10, shot down. My mother suffered from mental uh, nervous breakdowns my whole childhood. I come from a very dysfunctional childhood. My sister, my dad, my dad, but I spilled out all my family dirty laundry. And then I just went, oh my God, could I do it over? She went, no, thank you. And I went, I'm not gonna get the fucking job. I just blew the job. I, just, I knew I did a great audition, but I just blew the fucking job. And when I got that job, De Niro said to me the first day of work, you know why you got this? And I said, why? He goes, because you told the truth in your audition. Stay with that honesty, stay with that. That's how you gotta act. Just be really honest. That's what acting is. It's honesty. That is one of the best fucking stories I've heard in the entertainment business in 23 fucking years. That is great. That is tremendous. And you took the ball and ran from there. It's never stopped. 
Well, it's always been a struggle. I mean, I, I'm a working class actress. I mean, I'm no A-lister. I'm a worker. You know, I work a lot. Sometimes I don't work. Sometimes I work. But no matter what, you know, I always say this to people when they go, you know, even when I taught, I taught like a couple semesters at um, School of Visual Arts. I say, if you're not willing to just work the rest of your life, if I told you, you would work the rest of your life in a broken down theater. Nobody will even see you, but you can act in that theater. You can do all the plays. You can do shit. You can do that the rest of your life. You're an actor, but that's where you'll do it. Will you still want to be an actor? And if they say yes, then I say, then do it. Because you'll never be miserable when you're not working. You'll never be miserable when you got told no. You'll never be miserable when you don't work for long periods of time because you're just fucking happy being who you are and what you were meant to be. So when I had dry spells, of course I wanted to work because I needed to pay my bills. But I never said all this fucking business Oh, fuck this, fuck that. I was never not happy for my friends that worked all the time. All my friends worked all the time. And I was always still happy for them. And I was happy for them because I said, I want to be around working actors. I don't want to be around a bunch of non-working actors. Although I was around a lot of non-working actors. I like being around working actors. It teaches me and it gives me hope. I want you to get it, even if I don't get it. Because then you are my inspiration. If she got it, I can get it. That's how I always took it when somebody else got my job. That's how not I my look job, at it. Got the job. I'm like, That's how I look good. at things. And if Everything I get... about it is positive because I just want to be an actor. I don't want to be famous. I just want to be an actor and I want to be able to pay my bills. And I am successful. You are. That's a great attitude to have. And you haven't stopped since. I remember after The Sopranos ended, I saw you at an audition for something. To play yeah. a cop or something. Oh, I think it was CSI New York. I think we really? auditioned. I think so. I think it was. The, yes. Did now we it all, speak? No, I just said hello to you. You had on pants. You were dressed like a, a cop. And that's the only. I was, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days what auditions I went in that time. And I think it was CSI New York when it first came out. Like the original cast. Like this was to shoot the pilot. So it was a long time ago. But you have not fucking stopped. How did you end up getting The Sopranos? Kathy Moriarty called me, who I love. And to me, she's such a fucking great actress, man. Yes, she is. Um, Kathy Moriarty called me. She goes, Naduch. She named me Naduch. Everybody calls me Naduch. Naduch or Kitty are my two nicknames. She goes, Naduch, you got to go for this show, uh, The Sopranos. And I was like, but I don't sing. She goes, no, it's not about that. She goes, you got to go in. You're right for it. Call your agent. I call my agent. He goes, all right, I'm on it. And then I got an audition. I, I auditioned for Edie Falco's role. And they called me back. Of course, only Edie could have done Edie's role. Brilliant Edie, who I love. Um, Edie Falco's role. And then they called me back and I went in for Charmaine Bucco and uh, I got called the next day for that. They said, they, you know, David wants to give you Charmaine Bucco. So I was blessed. Again, blessed. Unbelievably blessed. You did great on that show. You were Thank great. You. Fucking great. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're here. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry you're not going to go to the premiere. I would love to see you. I heard from Vinny last night. And, well, no, uh, you know what? Wait, let me tell you. We, were, I think we're all, I mean, I'm invited to the Many Saints of Newark yes, yes. Um, premiere. But I may have to go back to the show that I'm blonde for. If I don't, I definitely want to come. And, and I and I want to see everybody. I, I would hope all the Sopranos are gone. I'd love, to, I'd love to see. We all love seeing each other. And I get to see you. Yes. No, they're all supposed to go. I heard from Vinny last night. And he said he'll see me at the premiere. I heard from a friend of Sharippa's. He's going. So, yeah, everybody's going to be there. Oh, and I'm so happy. I, I, You understand, I did The Wizard of Lies with Alessandra. Yes, yes. And I... 
me and Alessandro, I love him and I love his wife and I love their family. And I just am so happy for him. I am so happy for Michael. I'm happy for David Chase. He's unbelievable. He don't stop. I'm, I'm just I'm just really happy about this movie. I'm happy for you. I, I'm just it's so everything's a win win. Yes. It's a win win. I'm, I'm happy for Dave. I'm really happy for Michael. And I think, I hate talking shit, but I think Alessandro's going to come out with an award from this fucking thing. Oh! Uh, or at you know least a did? nomination. He me yes. When he got it. Yes. He's going to be. I, I think this is a good movie. I think they all did well. You saw it? Yeah. I saw it about three months ago, but I think all it's right. going to be on, different. In all honesty, how did you like yourself? In all honesty, yeah, I looked away. Why? I hate looking at myself on film. You want to know? Could I say something? You told me about the not me. You told the whole world the three the three thing the three uh, the three things you you know are uh, appreciate grateful and for, yes, great grateful for. I'm going to tell you something. When you watch yourself. You watch it again, go in with a different perspective and love yourself and say, wow, self, you're doing pretty fucking good from a kid from fucking nothing. Look at you up there. Look at you. Look at your eyes. Look at your mouth. Look at your nose, look at your ears, look at your hair, look at your body. You're up there. You're in a beautiful movie. You're so blessed. Look at you, kid. Look at you, kid. Look how good you're doing now. And look at yourself beautifully because all that put together made them hire you and, and, and appreciate it. Let that be one of the things. I appreciate me on a screen with all these fabulous people. I appreciate me being able to be seen and heard. I appreciate me to be doing what I love. I appreciate it. I appreciate my face, my body. That's what got me there. I'm healthy. I see, I breathe, I taste, I hear, I, I have, you know, all these things, all these things that put me together, me, me, me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Joey. I appreciate you. And let your little inner child that was beaten up and broken down, look up at that screen and say, we did it. That's fucking beautiful. That we is as beautiful it, as it kids. gets. We did it. We did it. We fucking did it. And I don't care if it goes nowhere or you never work again. You fucking did it. You fucking inner child that strives to keep going, the sparkle in your eye, the honesty you have, all the things that make you did it. I'm so like look you. at it again differently. I'm like you, Catherine, right here. It's all about this right here. That's oh me and my, my mom. God. <laughs> she died when I was 16, and this is it right here. She wanted me to grow up and be a man. I did. That's it. Uh, what's her name? Denora. Lenora? Denora. Denora. With a D. Denora, he did it. We did it. We fucking did it. Denora and Bunny, my mother was Bunny, and she's up there too, and Nikki, my father. But I don't care, scrappy kids from nothing. I don't care how big or small. We're trying. Give yourself a fucking hug. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a little pat on the shoulder. Appreciate the little moments because that's your life right there, right now, this moment. It's every single step we take. It's our life. That's it. Can't keep waiting for the big event, the big this, the big apartment. My biggest, my most happiest times is when I fucking had nothing. You know, as a kid, I was homeless a couple of times. We slept in Central Park on newspapers. And very, you know, short period of time, like two weeks. Then again, we did it for a week. And I got to tell you, we got evicted. I was still so fucking happy. Like, what the fuck is Am I stupid? Like, I just feel you got to appreciate your life. The good, the bad, the ugly. It's your fucking life. And then it's over. Then it's over. And right now, 
it's like you're here. Appreciate it. And you're not going to be Miss Happy-Go-Lucky or Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky all day, every day and appreciate. But try, try, try to to just appreciate it. Like you looking at yourself on screen. Look again, man. Look again, dude. That little Joey Diaz fucking 10-year-old that was going through shit. Look again and go, man, what the fuck? You got up there. We did it. We did it. That's you, it. It's to be appreciated. It. I really appreciate it now. Now you really gave me a different appreciation for it. Yes. I love you, You made Catherine. a mark in this world. You really fucking, this is one of the best podcasts I've done in a long goddamn time. You oh, schooled me. Oh, don't make me cry. You fucking schooled me today. I, I love it. I am uh, blown away. I had tears in my eyes. You made me think about my mom. You really fucking hit oh. it out of the park. That was great. You are a fucking I star. It. I appreciate you with all my fucking heart. You know, I would watch you and go, wow, she's bringing something different to the table. And now I know what it is you're bringing to the table. You got a lot of heart, man. You got a lot of fucking heart. Harlem filled your heart with fucking balls and toughness. You're the real deal, Narduch. <laughs> Homage to Kathy Moriarty. I love her, too. I haven't seen her in years. She still have the pizza place? You know, I don't know. I'm not clear. I spoke to her about uh, maybe three weeks ago. I I didn't. I forgot what she said. I think I asked her, but I forgot what she said. I forgot. Yeah, they opened up a new one by my house before I moved from L.A. They had opened up a new pizza place by my house. I had gone to it once. It was good. You know, it was their pizza. Good pizza. Mulberry Street Pizza? Yeah. Yeah, they wow. opened one in Studio City before I left, so it was great. Um, how long is your podcast? Are we going too long? No, that's it. We're done. Oh, okay. I'll call is you that filming next. anymore? No, it, we're filming. We're going to end right now. I love you to death. I'm happy you came on today. It was tremendous. They're going to fucking love you. Let these savages know where they could find you. <laughs> Do you have any social media, anything? Yes, I just started following you, Coco. And that's my niece's name. Shout out to Coco. They can find me, at, I don't know, I guess on... on uh, Instagram, in Twitter. Instagram, Catherine Arducci. Um, Twitter? That's it, really. I don't have anything fancy. I have Instagram. No website? No. Okay. I love you, Narducci. You should start one of these podcasts, Narducci. You're very good at this. No, I like, I, 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 uh, I know. You fucking just blew me away today. So you're very good at this. I don't get blown away too much. You have some oh. deep knowledge, so I love you to death. You have a new fan, a bigger fan. I was a fan oh. already. Now I'm a bigger fucking fan because I got to look at your heart and what you're about. So thank you very much for coming on today. And let's good. stay in touch, okay? I'm going to call you every week and be in touch with you. And these guys know. I keep in touch with people. I don't fuck around. When I love you, I love you to death. So I appreciate you taking the time to come on today, Catherine. I, I got, I, and I appreciate you. And let me tell you, you got to get on. I'm telling Chris Broncado, we need Joey Diaz on. We'll do it. I love you. Stay black and stay in touch with me, okay? Okay. And thank you very, very much for today. You're a, a beautiful woman. I love you to death. Thank you. We're family. That's it. Stay in touch. Okay. All right. God bless you. Have a great week. Bye. You too. Bye, beautiful. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? I hope you enjoyed Catherine. It was a, a great little tete-a-tete. You know, she broke it down. I have a hard time watching myself, guys. And I have a hard time listening to myself because I hate my voice. And I hate what the fuck I look like. Look at. Look like. But when I go to this premiere next Wednesday... I'm going to take her advice and look at my eyes, look at my face, and pat myself on the back. You know what? It's time I did that anyway. I've never done that before in my life. It's time to fucking uh, smell the fucking roses 
and see what's going on. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. It's from the bottom of my fucking heart, like I do all of them. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but the thing is, we always motherfucking show up, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. We always fucking show up. Episode 97, three more to 100. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, 98. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little off. I'm a little fucking off. But uh, we're making it happen and we're doing it. I'm happy you guys checked in today. Again, I have no dates to give you or nothing like that. The only thing I have for you is laughing gas like a motherfucker. It came in, and from what I'm hearing, it's stronger than ever. I haven't gotten my little fucking box yet, but... <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine went down and he goes, dog, I bought it last time and I bought it this time and it's fucking smoking. So uh, today some kid hit me up on Twitter and said, I went to fucking L.A. and I bought some and it's fucking tremendous. I love it, Joey. So it is what it is. Thank you. And a strain is coming out in Denver and it's coming out in fucking uh, somewhere else. I was told they're all fake, guys. So if somebody in Denver tries to sell you laughing gas, it's a fugazi. If somebody in San Jose tries to sell you laughing gas, it's a fugazi. And if somebody in San Diego, it's a fugazi. I'll let you know when that weed is available with the original bag so you can fucking save it, okay? You know I don't fuck with you motherfuckers, and I love you with all my heart. I don't want you buying the wrong thing. When you're looking for a Joey Diaz shirt, if it isn't on joeydiaz.net, it's a Fugazi, so just to let you know. Any of these sites you see, they're all Fugazis. When somebody tells you they're selling laughing gas, it's a Fugazi. If you check with laughing gas on Instagram, they'll tell you what stores they're at. And now we're about to put it in stores, so I'll keep you guys posted. Without further ado, that's it. I want to thank Catherine Narducci for coming on. Please follow her on Instagram, support her movies. She's fucking the real deal, holy feel. And that's it, and that's that. Another fun-filled weekend. Another fun-filled week here at fucking the Joint Studios, my basement. Who gives a fuck? I love you, cocksuckers, with all my heart. Thank you for checking in on the Joint today. Have a great week, and I'll see you motherfuckers. Tip top, motherfucking Magoo, Monday the 20th. Now we're in double digits in the double digits, cocksuckers, and it'll be down to 10 days for this movie to get released. I love you guys with all my heart. Have a great week. Thank you for supporting. And now for a word from my motherfucking sponsors, Jack. All right, you bad motherfuckers. Thank you very much for taking the time and listening today and always supporting our fucking dream, okay? I want to thank Catherine Narducci for coming on today and making me fucking cry. I love it when somebody makes me fucking cry, but... She opened up my mind to a few things. I hope she opens up yours, too. Again, thank you very much for supporting the joint. Before we go, I got a word from our sponsors. I'd like to welcome our new sponsor, MD Hearing Aid. I know, Joey, what the fuck? We're young men. Why are you telling us about hearing aids? Because I want to talk to you about how it improved my life. I can hear things now. I hear birds chirping. I hear airplanes. I hear the clicker when I turn the left on signal on my car. You know, for years, I didn't hear the clicker. Do you answer every question with a huh? Can you understand the waitress is mumbling? Then MD hearing aids are for you. If you're worried about looking like an old man, don't. Because they got a sleek design, design that fits in your ear. It's nearly invisible. Nobody will know. They're water resistant, so if you forget to take them out, no problem. My other ones, the good ones, the $20 ones, I can't bring them in the shower. I'll get electrocuted. They got a rechargeable battery and lasts up to 30 hours. Listen, nobody could talk that much. So, these hearing aids can cost you up to thousands of dollars. My old ones cost $2,800 a piece. But these, the Volt Plus from MD Hearing Aid, $299 each. They simplify the design and they cut out the middleman. And this is all direct to you. No doctors or prescriptions needed. So listen up, they have over 600,000 satisfied customers. They give you a 45 day risk free trial and a 100% money back guarantee if you're not happy. That's what I'm talking about. If you struggle with hearing loss at all, you better try MD Hearing Out right now. Reclaim your life from hearing loss okay go to mdhearingaid.com use promo code joey and they're going to give you something that they've never done before you buy one you get one free deal 
They're normally $600 for the pair. MD Hearing Aid is going to do them for $299 each for the pair with Code Joey. Enter Code Joey, and I'm giving you one basically for free. Plus, I'm throwing in the extra charging case. That's $100 value for free for the, church, uh, the joint family. So head to mdhearingaid.com and press in Joey. You got questions? 1-833-773-1355. Again, grab a pen. You got a question? 1-833-773-1355. Hello, it's MD Hearing Aid. Call them up right now, but remember, when you press in Joey, they're gonna give you one for free. So it's usually 600, it's gonna be 299. Thank your Uncle Joey, and thank Hemdy Hearing Aid for that. From the heart of Jersey, the joint is brought to you by DraftKings, the best. You're like, Joey, what, listen, DraftKings is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. You can't get no better than that. Week one is over of football. We can't bring that back. The Rams beat the Bears, the whole fucking deal. Sandy, uh, you know, Baltimore beat the Raiders. What are you going to do? But you got to get on the action right now because if you bet a dollar, they're going to give you $200 in free bets instantly. Just bet $1 on any football game. If you can't bet sportsbook in your state, don't worry. DraftKings has a huge catch prizes up for grabs all season with the daily fantasy contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at a million of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. They also have a casino with blackjack, roulette, poker. DraftKings is safe, reliable, secure. You can get your money out whenever the fuck you want to. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to bet anyway, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use promo code Joey to receive 200 in free bets. That's promo code Joey to get 200 in free bets this week at DraftKings Sportsbook app. The official sports betting partner of the NFL. I got a couple rules for you, right? You got to be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Colorado, all the gambling states are allowed. New customers only for this deal. Restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, I don't want you hanging around. I don't want to bury you guys. You know, take care of it. Call 1-800-GAMBLER if you're in Jersey. If you're in Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. But if you're checked, you can't get in trouble with DraftKings. You know why? Because you have to pay before you bet. So everything's covered. This is the way to go. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. It's time to win some Gitas. Bet a dollar to get you back 200 Come on. That's a deal in itself. That's the next four weeks at $50 a piece bet until you get your fucking job or you get a check or you mug somebody. Go to DraftKings.com right now. Press in Joey. Put in a dollar and get 200 in free bets. The joint is also brought to you by Upstart since we're talking about money. Listen, everybody hates looking at their credit card statement every month. When you're in debt, it feels like it never fucking ends. But guess what? I'm bringing you Upstart and they can help. Upstart is a fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your fucking debt. Listen, nobody likes being in debt. It sucks and you're never going to get out of it. You know that. You and I both know that. Stop fucking around. Whether it's paying off your credit cards or consolidating all your debt, get a simple fixed monthly payment every month. It's nice and easy. Over a million people have used Upstart to get out of debt, and you're sitting there broke, not knowing what to do. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score. They take into account your income, your employment in history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. You dig me? Just a five-minute online rate check. You get approved the same day, and you can receive the funds the next business day. That's what Upstart is all about. If Upstart, if debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Let's do this today, all right? Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Joey. Just go there, take the five-minute quiz, and see where you're at. That's upstart.com slash Joey. Upstart.com slash Joey. Do not forget to use the URL to let them know I sent you. Now I got to throw in this disclaimer. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Joey and get out of debt today. 
upstart.com slash Joey. I want to thank Upstart. I want to thank MD Hearing Aid. And I want to thank DraftKings Sportsbook app. All three of them. Dot com slash Joey. Win some money with DraftKings. Hear what they're telling you with MD Hearing Aid. And get out of debt with Upstart. I love you motherfuckers. I want to thank Catherine again. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank DraftKings, MeUndies, Manscaped. Uh, who else? Oh my God, there's so many. Who else? Public Rec. You guys have been great. Have a great week. Stay black. And I love you, cocksuckers. I'll see you guys Monday. Tip top motherfucking Magoo.